We are now live. Setting up the. Oh, let's do it like that. Setting up the live squawk for you guys. We're of course behind schedule, because how could we do this without being behind schedule? Squawk. Are the lights squawk coming to the uh, terminal now? In front. Boom. Bill is on fire now.
Euros finding its feet again um, near the top end of the range on the day. 37.28 going into the uh, uh, read versus the dollar. Euro sterling last there trades now. It's what 82.04. Okay, right, three minutes ago. Let's just a quick recap then. Uh, Eurozone inflation uh, for February flash read year over year expected at 0 0.7 from 0 0.8. Uh, the range 0 0.6 to 0 0.9, 0 0.6 to 0.9. Uh, as for the core, that's expected at 0 0.8 from 0 0.8 last time round. Unemployment rate seen at 12% from 12% uh, last time round for the Eurozone. The range 11.9 to 12.1, 11.9 to 12.1. We have uh, Italian consumer price uh, data on the wires as well. Uh, expected to see that come in on the year over year, 0.7% for the headline in line with last month. The range 0.6 to 0.7. Harmonised month over month seen dropping by 0.1 of a percent from a fall of 2.1. The range minus 0.2 to flat. Year over year, harmonised seen at 0.6 from 0.6. The range 0.6 to 0.7, 0.6 to 0.7. I'll just give you a quick uh, update, Diwa this time round in terms of their uh, impression for today's uh, CPI. So we're just under a week until the Governing Council's next policy meeting, and given the current appropriate concerns about deflationary risks in the euro area, uh, February's uh, flash estimate of euro area CPI will rightly attract most attention today. And after the flash estimate of German inflation on EU harmonised measure yesterday declined a greater than expected 0.2 percentage points to 1% year over year, the lowest since August 2010. We continue to expect that the headline euro area inflation will decline by 0.1 of a percentage point to 0.7% year over year, the level last recorded in October, which prompted the ECB subsequently to cut rates, with the risk of, to this forecast skewed to the downside. In addition, today also brings the latest euro area labour market figures, while German figures yesterday reported a further drop in unemployment in February to its lowest level in more than a year. These are expected to show that the, uh, the unemployment rate for the euro area uh, in aggregate remained unchanged at 12 percent at the start of 2014 just one point percentage one point one of a percentage point off its series high hit last autumn remember we saw that Italian read earlier today that saw a jump to 12.9 percent for uh, Italy unemployment Ten seconds.
0.8 percent, 0.8 there for, unemployment, uh, for the uh, uh, inflation. Um, unemployment rate 12 percent in line with estimations there. Core um, year over year 1 percent. It jumps to 1 percent on that core CPI uh, year over year. Italian uh, CPI though comes into negative territory, 0.1 percent on the month over month headline. 0.5% on the year over year, so still falling prices there in Italy. Harmonised then down 0.3 on the month and up 0.5% on the year over year, falling below that 0.6% region seen last month. Greek January producer price inflation was down 0.9% from a fall of 0.2 uh, seen in December. Retail sales out of Greece fell by 6.1% from a gain of 2.9 in November. Euro carries uh, its move on here to the upside now against the dollar. Seven, 37.76 uh, with your eyeball just uh, seeing a touch softer now. There's definitely a tangible risk that we could see this thing below 0.7% um, expectation there, 0.6, more than uh, likely to see a 0.8% read, so a uh, surprise for many out there. Euro dollar the highs of the year now, uh, 37.81 we trade last against the dollar. As Bund then for today's lows. Uh, from Zurich, Fred Fisher says, pleased with decision to taper. Uh, we've heard quite a lot from him, so unless he really adds to, again, as you said yesterday, unless he adds to the uh, argument or the debate, we won't read out everything he says. European Union requests bank proposals for a 2.6 billion euro bond issue in either 10 or 15 year maturity, say sources, talking to the IFR, talking to IFR. And IAG in its conference call says informal discussions are on undergoing for more joint business accords. Uh, Turkey's Atlas jet plane has been denied landing at Crimea airport. That's just uh, out on the wires in that uh, a Turkish Atlas jet plane has been denied landing at Crimea airport. Again, Crimea, uh, we heard this morning, had, was said to have been overrun by uh, armed armed. Um, Assailants.
the, the uh, ONS, the UK's ONS, says a new statistic measure will signally increase UK public sector net debt X uh, due to reclassification of some assets. So one to watch. UK National Statistics Office says to phase out publishing public sector finances X financial sector interventions and replace it with public sector finances X banking groups. In amongst all that CPR data, we had uh, France announces to sell between up to eight billion euros of long-term government bonds at next uh, auction uh, next Thursday.
So that French supply coming through, is, or the um, announcement of the next week's supply comes through as expected, really. The October 22s, the uh, May 24s, and the October 27s. Uh, so on that CPI front, reaction there from ICAP's uh, Philip Tyson says marginally higher than expected, but this isn't going to be sufficient to ease concerns about deflation going forward. Nevertheless, the data, with the data having remained uh, broadly consistent with some, albeit small pickup in growth, it may be uh, enough to allow the ECB to continue to play uh, for time at next week's meeting, especially with core CPI having picked up slightly to 1%. However, underlying price pressure would weak, could weaken further in the coming months, which, along with the uh, influence of the strong euro, will keep anxieties over deflation bubbling. Note also that unemployment for the region also remains stubbornly high at 12%. That's comments there from uh, uh, Philip Tyson of ICAP. Uh, Coelho says we'll conclude a programme in May.
Uh, Face Fisher says, hard pressed to argue that there is insufficient money in the system to put people back into work. There we go, through 38 the figure now for the euro dollar. Uh, one spot 38.05 we trade last. Some more stops there that uh, trigger so We are oaks. tuning out the lovely uh, it's Harry Daniels, and we're about to start the show. There we go. I've made an intro now, but I have to hack because for some reason this thing doesn't uh, doesn't appear to like to. To send out uh, it's the wrong one. Uh, I like so. I know. Type mistake twice. <laughs> Bobby, can you see me? I can't see you, but no, you might be able to see can. me. Uh, let me just fix that real quick. One second. I gotta call you back. Or I don't have to call you back or nothing. Like, you do or you don't? I don't. Get do you, Matthias? So then boxen so like over then converter. Yeah, then that. Yeah, put the box. Look at that. You know, it's a little Mark is moving, yeah? There we go. Boom. Oh, there we go. Boom. You can see me or you can... What the hell happened there? Should you snud the camera? Oh, yeah, no, I flipped that. What? Flip bar. What's <laughs> flip bar mean in Norwegian? No, I flipped something here. Really? Uh, okay. Oh, it's not Norwegian. No. It was English. Was. Yeah. So I just saw you tweet something. We're sharing secrets about yes. the show, yeah? Yeah, it's your idea. I like it. So you're gonna tell me you're a cross dresser or something? What's? This is me while I'm cross dressing. Really, <laughs> man. Uh, you probably get, you. Do, I imagine you do get cross dressing. You're, you're that quite fastidious, aren't you? Quite fussy. It's yeah. like, oh, my hair is slightly out of place. Guys oh, like uh, me. Yeah. About right. Um, I yeah, think no, you're into, today, like, you're the kind of guy slow. that's into, <laughs> what could that be? Hmm? No, I'm just figuring, like, what, <laughs> like, if I'm a cross-dresser, what are you? Oh, wow, well, gosh, I'm a down-dresser. <laughs> no, but, like, uh, I don't know, you, you go with, like, Max Moswell, what, is that his name, the Formula One guy? Mosley. Mosley, huh? yeah. <laughs> oh, Mosley. He got caught in those clubs, oof, that was rough. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, wasn't it? Well, I mean, mostly uh, is it because of he just shares the same name with the nineteen thirties British fascist, or was, was there something else as well, something along those lines? Him, like what he did? Yeah, I don't know. I don't you know. don't know what he the, the, the sport to, to, to disrepute. But how is it possible that you haven't seen uh, the thick of it? Seriously. 
I don't watch a lot of television. Often, no, it's, often, it's, about, um, it's the funniest show ever, and it's about politics, and it's very, very funny, and they swear a lot. My office so small. Yeah, I mean, I laugh. I, I someone's just asked me why is my office so small. I this is my my office is massive. It's just the wall behind here is so I can be on. Um, what's it called? Oh. Television. This is television. Yeah, I've got I've got one room here, which is where I do this um, television. I've got another room next door, the size of this room, and um, I've got a, a kitchen over there. I've actually got a like a cloakroom there, Cloak? and then a massive walk-in cupboard. So, yeah, look. I mean, um, oh wow. Yeah, that's oh, just wow. from I'm doing the. Um, this is behind the scenes stuff here. We're really sharing secrets. I'm going to share another secret, though. That's my... I have a good secret to share. Gosh, Are you no, ready? That's my webcam. I've always screwed that up. But that's... Um, this is just the room I do it in, yeah? No, but are you ready? Because I got inspired by CNN when I was getting my coffee now. The, where, I, where I have an office. Um, so this is all about sharing secrets before we start. I'm going to share the, the secret that I, most people no, keep, don't... Keep your clothes on, sorry, please. <laughs> it's just my top, but the bottom is always off. <laughs> Okay, are you ready for it? Yeah, yeah, go. All right, is everyone ready? Boom. This is the studio. <laughs> uh, what, you and your Chernobyl? <laughs> Actually, I think I, I think I prefer you with a green background. Yeah. It brings out the green in my skin. Yeah, well. I was watching CNN and they had a green screen malfunction on the weather. On CNN Live, that's kind of rough. Uh, I? I was probably I was probably watching in the thick of it. Um, anyway, so let's um, we're talking. Yeah. About lessons learned, lots of lessons learned this week in all sorts of shapes and forms. About um, big bad, what we're doing, big TV. Uh, do you want to? You wanted to share some secrets, so I guess we've already shared some. Yeah, we can talk a little bit. Let me uh, just start to show. First, I want to play my my beautiful intro that I made yesterday. Okay, well, let's tie it all into the show then. Let's yeah. finish with big TV. One thing that people say, I mean, one thing I learned in politics about speaking is strong start, strong finish. Yeah, you can't be like pancake. That's what uh, uh, I... I listened to a really interesting speech the other day. By, it was by a soldier. Uh, I was on radio. I was driving... And um, he was really interesting what he had to say. It was about, um, uh, uh, what's his name, Bin Laden and everything to do with that. And he spoke for, must have been half an hour. And then he came to the end of the sentence and he says, that's it. That's yeah. the end. If you have to say that's it, then you did it wrong. <laughs> that is the rule. It was just like, <laughs> one sentence would have nailed and wrapped his entire speech up. Yeah, just say boom, he's dead or something like that. I don't know what they would say. It gotta be no, but you. you uh, and oh, that leaves so many questions unanswered. I'll leave that to you. Yeah. Yeah, I just walk off. You know, I just say anything. Come out with a cliche. <laughs> Even I like to finish on a quote that raises the red, violets are blue. And, you know, do the um, what's his name, Eric Cantona. Oh my lord! Let's watch that now. Let's watch that together. Uh, that is. I watched that the other day, actually. Yeah, the you seagulls did. quote. Yeah, the... Um, yeah, let's just watch it. The seagulls. Yeah, one second. Just uh, kill any pop-up. <sighs> oh, I've got a... This is good now. One second. Oh, well. This is the Kung Fu kick first. Is that Henry Winkler in the crowd? It was the wrong video. One second. Yeah. But look, Here, I, here's the right I guess that's the guy he's going to kick, isn't it? Yeah. What's his name? Yeah, he looks like Henry Winkler. I never noticed that. What the hell is this? Stupid YouTube. There's nothing. The seagulls quote. 
<laughs> this is preparation. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I've got a video for you. Too. Yeah, now. <laughs> it's because I think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you very much. <laughs> that is so good. Yeah. You couldn't really hear it, but if a seagull uh, follows the troller, it's because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Well, that's very true. It is incredibly savvy media handling. But I think he probably had some problems due to his like uh, arrogant handling of the media, like unnecessary problems. Don't you think? Yeah, I mean, um, this uh, this means some famous cases that I um, mean we've had a whole um, oh, not Hutton, what's the inquiry called? Um, Levinson in the UK about about the media, and it's quite clear some people if you rile the media, there's such a vested interest in what they all was a vested interest in what they did that if you wind them up, they'll come after you. I mean, David Mellor sending in a is it hooker, but you've got to be careful calling to people like that, but sending some beautiful paid woman in a Chelsea strip because he's a Chelsea fan in to, to see him. And then, they, you know, he's bang to rights on it. So they just go for you. I mean, they, and they can do that. And they, so what I've noticed is oh, if, yeah. you're, if you're using a media a lot, like let's say a Carl Icahn, you're using the media a lot. The second you, you misstep, they punish you uh, quite, quite a lot more than they would sort of an average person because they feel like they've been part of the journey and now you have to pay for it. I noticed that a lot. In, uh, there's a yeah. famous one, um, with one guy called Idar Volvik, a Norwegian guy. He was uh, at one point, he was the biggest trader in Europe or something. Front of Trader Magazine, front cover. Yeah, he was the cover of Trader Magazine. I, I believe he was the biggest single trader in Europe because he was so levered. He made a billion kroner on uh, some, um, uh, yeah, telco he sold, and then he lost every single dime of that, trading it away. Many, many people have done that. Yeah, but a billion though, poof. Yeah, well, you see, you might learn a few lessons <laughs> in that process, which yeah. is what today is about. Can exactly. you do me a favor? Um, actually, I'm ready to go. Well, just play one video before we start. I love this video. People will know I've tweeted this video, I've dropped it into Slack. And uh, it's, it's basically my analysis of the euro dollar for the last um, for the last week or so. It yeah. sums it up. In fact, you need to play it twice because it applies twice. Um, but if you want to play it, yeah, let's see if you've got the right one. You wrote C A. Oh, sorry? there you go. I'm oh, sorry. You put it in another place. Tweet vid. What is that? Yeah, yeah is that Ten. all right? Or can you? Yeah. yeah. That's where I, I posted it. So. Oh, this uh, I know what this is. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> black Adder. Pre, it's a pre Black Adder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout the wings. The third one. Oh, that was it. <laughs> I love that. Because uh, it whipped and wedge, yeah? So we found a witch. We found a wedge. Burner. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, now it's the intro going here. Yeah. I had everything lined up, but now, now it's gone. Okay, Let's so see. should we start? Yeah. No, wait, that's not my full one. I have a big one. Okay, let me remove those. First time ever we have a proper, proper intro. With music? Yeah, everything, yeah. Where did I put that? Did I not put it on the... Um. What's your favorite black header quote? I 
can't say that. I told you yesterday. Um, I, I actually, I've, I've reverted. I'm so fond of this quote that I've kind of amended it so I can say it in public. It's a scene when Blackadder gets um, sentenced to death because he's trying to get out of the war. It's a World War War II, World War One one. Brilliant series, just brilliant. I and mean, the last episode of it is amazing. Very, very poignant and very um, hits you right between the eyes. It's quite funny because it's a comedy series, but it's such a big point to be made. Anyway, um, so he's about to be um, executed um, and shot, and um, the firing squad comes to visit. <laughs> to this little part of the service they offer. <laughs> So four or five jolly guys come in and just explain it's part of the service they're offering, you know, anything they particularly like, you know, throw a few, they crack a Oi. few fiery <laughs> squad jokes. <laughs> and they ask if there's anything, you know, that he can do for him. And he turns around and he actually says, yes, you can sod off and die. <laughs> said it. So I've actually, uh, I've changed that. So I use it quite a lot when I play tennis or something, I want to swear. So I say bog off. And yeah, basically bog off, buy one, get one free, bog off and die. Which is my own form of swearing, because I try and not swear. But some people would argue sort of is not swearing, but anyway. Are we ready to kick off? Yeah, let me just test one thing. There we go, it's working. <laughs> Shall I sing Black Adder to the... Um... No, I have music. I do? Yeah, but I have to hack it a little bit to make it work, because I still haven't gotten the audio out of the thing, but... Now I'm ready to go. I actually wasn't what paying attention for the first part. No, it's really cool. <laughs> I was so excited when I got it to work yesterday. <laughs> yeah, you were so excited about something I couldn't even be bothered to watch it. Sorry. <laughs> That's <interesting. laughs> Can you just start again. I'll watch it this time. We can watch it again. I would yeah. gladly show it again. Let me yeah, show it again. Let me show it again because I yeah. wasn't paying attention. So <laughs> market made so. yeah? Stupid markets. Who care about markets? <laughs> I'm playing an intro here. I have to hack it to make it work. Another billion crown out to look. This, this. Let me restart that. <laughs> Hello. You like it? Yeah, it's good. The tunes. Have we um, have we started? What are we gonna do? Yes, are we, we gonna started. We did a double start here because you didn't pay attention to my my big moment here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, we're not gonna gloss over the big moment. We're gonna we're gonna. No. Make a. I, I was a... dancing. I love that. Okay. Too. Well, do you wanna start and start the show and introduce? Yes. Or... My name is uh, Svara Rerik Nilsson. I am better known as financial acrobat, acrobat, and somebody called me. And uh, we are doing Fill or Kill. It's uh, our staple of the morning lineup on Big TV. Big TV is a little channel we run from Oslo. And it's, it's, it's now very small, so it's an ironic name, but it's going to be big. And uh, we're here with uh, the lovely, the, uh, yeah, I don't know, any adjectives for you? Morning, Ed. Morning. Hi. I'm Ed Matz, also known to some as Ed Matz. <laughs> How do you come up with your Twitter handle? I, I, it took me a long time to think about it. Yeah, yeah. It took me ages. But actually, I still I, I told you this story about names. They did some research. I might have even talked about it on live on public on, on here. Did some research in the states years ago about the sexiest male and female names, 
and they came out and they, they changed faces with names, etc. And they've discovered what they thought were the sexiest names. I can't remember what they, the females were, but the two sexiest male names Edmund were Ed, and... Ed, no, no, were Ed <laughs> and Matt. <laughs> And that's his devil. <laughs> but your name is not really Ed, you know that, right? No, isn't it? It's Edmund. Yes, Blackadder. Yeah. People didn't know, but there you go. Yeah, Edmund. Yeah. My name is Edmund. So anyway. Um, and Edmund, we've been doing this show now for, uh, I don't know, three weeks or something. And we've been doing Stocks and Scotch pre-show stuff uh, in the past. And um, we learned uh, a few lessons from this. And I don't know if you want to wrap up with this or start with this or... Yeah, no, let me frame it, as I like to call it, because um, I, I tell you what's kind of cool, having a storyboard as well. Uh, I don't know what they do on real television, um, real television, eh? Um, but, yeah, exactly. Um, it's nice, to, partly so it's very, you can draw on um, some of the, the things we want to talk about, um, but it also, I've got this in front in uh, paper form, um, and I, I, have, um, I have put it in order, sequence before. But it's kind of cool. Actually, I've got lots of them. And it's really useful. Pinterest is really useful. One or two people have suggested alternatives like Flipboard. I haven't, you know. No. Well, I've Flipboard got, might work, actually, because you create a magazine from it. So, mm. I, Yeah, I saw, I I saw the other Flipboard. day I saw something um, oh, that was that, a that magazine. Could work. It's really kind of cool. I mean, it's very, it's over, over-egged, if you like. A bit like, you know. Uh, the CNBC, let's try and carry one small story and over embellish it and glitz it and everything. And then so you get one small point. That's your takeaway. But, but you feel like is, you, uh, you've watched Flipboard. a film to get it from. This is yeah, that, I've seen some. Oh, that's what so they this, did it in. This is created by one guy. And it's uh, the guy's Robert Scoble. And he created it when Google Glass came out, called it Glass Holes. That's like what they're called. And you create a magazine. Oh, right. It's quite yeah, beautiful. I've seen it. That's exactly what I How was talking about. How beautiful is this? It's really cool. I mean, this is beautiful. It is. Maybe we should use this <laughs> because you could, but you have to write and stuff. But or but it pulls out like stuff from. Um, so you pull no, out the tweet. Look, look, look um, if we did that. Maybe this is better, actually. I don't know how easy it is. Maybe but this is still the pre-show. <laughs> you get to play your tune again. Because if we did that, oh, then can we I play can, my tune? it's actually quite large and the quality is cool, and you can flip it. You know, you can go to page 16 where there's a quote by, you know, Jesse Livermore. Yeah. And you can put that as the background and I, I can be talking or whoever talking. Yeah. And we can carry on with that as a background. So it does kind of, well, this, well here's the, that's a secret. Because a lot of the things we're doing, one reason, we have an end game. Well, not an end game necessarily, but an end of a phase game where we want to take this big TV or, or fill or kill. To a point which I am just blown away by. I'm so excited if we can even pull half of it off, it'll be pretty amazing. Um, but that's where we want to work to. But one of the reasons why it's kind of like, um, and actually I've called it a webinar early in the week, which is why it kind of got to be the style it did. Um, yeah. One reason we're doing this form is to build some tractions, just to, but also to experiment with some of the things we're doing and how we do it. And if we end up, I really like that concept of of you and me sitting in front of a magazine and flipping it. Together, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm just thinking about some of the later concepts. Without no, what, what we could do, uh, imagine this though. So uh, this is, imagine that this side of the screen uh, would be the, so I can bring in the, um, the magazine here, what we could do. Uh, this is just, I have to edit on the fly here. So what we could uh, realistically do is to, let's see here, we could have it as part of the website. So let's consider this is on the side of the website somehow. And it's part of the broadcast. And while we're talking, we're flipping it around. Yeah, or even better. What about how, how this nice is concept? Or, or you've got to be careful about the confusion on this concept. But what about generally about people wanting to flip through the video? You tab the video. So, you know, we do need to, we will be segmenting the program. Into well, it's segmented already. Video. It's just the fact that, uh, like the way when it's live, it, it's immediately available. So that's uh, just, just a fact yeah, that we let, have. Let me finish with what I was saying. Then you might understand. And what I'm saying is the, um, if we segment, you know, got clear segments, then you can tab. You can tab. So someone, you can use the magazine like you do with um, touch screen, 
and you can drag yourself into the, the broadcast where it says 25 minutes, Ed introduces Ashraf or Ashraf. And you don't want to hear Ed Matt speak. You just want to come and listen to Ashraf. So you drag to the tab physically into the that. broadcast. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm not sure that Flipboard is it's possible to do that. No, 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 I don't, I doubt. I mean, there probably is a technology okay, out there, but it's, it's, it's fun to it's experiment. Doing, what it's doing is taking saying. Flipboard in video form to do that, and that'd yeah. be kind of cool. And that's where, you know, the world is going to go. Any, just, I, I just, I, I've never been as excited about technology and, and markets and everything, how they hang together as I am now in my entire uh, life, uh, career, because what I think is happening, what we're starting to see is a breakdown of barriers that will make so things possible. If you go and see a web designer, a good one, they say to you, um, just tell me what you want. You can do anything. And I love that approach, you know, the can-do approach. And I think what's happening is the same thing on a much wider basis. You know, people will end up with five or six jobs. The barriers of what people do is is going to break down but also allows greater flexibility of what people can do and, and bringing together whereas you know before what is really interesting is how this one works in a regulatory framework is whereas it's almost the opposite of separating investment banks with banking everyone can do anything supermarkets can be can become prop shops you know you break down those barriers and then what we're trying to do here is bring someone from there to there and then move this there and wrap it up and present it. And that is really exciting, I think. But as to whether we can put it off is another thing. Well, I mean, what we're doing, we're, I mean, people maybe don't understand what this is. A lot of people drop by and ask, what, what am I looking at? If they're watching the pre-show and we're just chit-chatting. Chit and uh, but, but I think that uh, in time it will be more obvious. But effectively what we're doing is creating ultra niche TV and uh, that's what I'm seeing as the huge trend that's what I want to watch I'm gonna I want to watch what I care about so somebody asked me yesterday why do you do a uh, talk about trading so much you're not a trader and I, said, I don't know why do people talk about fly fishing it's just my interest so it's it's what I uh, like to uh, read about and hear about even though I don't you. do it it's like one of my interests and it's uh, then you there is no there is no content for that and you have a thing like Twitter which is kind of satisfying in that but you need more and you need the conversation and you need the faces and the explanations and everything and so we're just taking the, sub, the subset. Twitter, I was going to say it sounds rude but I think Twitter's a flea pit but there are a lot of nice good fleas out there you know yeah. well, that's so my, my, my view on it. The number of people you find uh, who are really good quality on Twitter is amazing but there's a lot of rubbish and there's a problem no, with the internet is the lack of people. accountability isn't it? For, for for finding like me uh, approaching you way back, that's good. I like that. But uh, uh, for for uh, just like sending out content or like for as a distribution platform, it's dead. I mean, it doesn't work at all. So well, and it's also become saturated. You know, it's like uh, I, one reason maybe I think of it as you know, it's like flies. Uh, the, everyone, all the sellers, you know, and I sell as well. Um, throw stuff out there, and you just get deluged. And you know, as a means to an end, you know, you think go to trading forums, but the problem, trading forums, they're enclosed. Yeah. Yeah. And the world is going the opposite way maybe people drop in and maybe you can break down the barriers. I kind of like Google Plus and this, its flexibility in that way. Um, and I think that's, if you recognize that's where the world's going to go, then it doesn't quite matter, you know, that certain things don't have the distribution out there because people won't be viewing Twitter on Twitter. They'll be using it as an input onto something else. I think, to, I think this year here, we're going to see a huge shift. And uh, so... Uh, Part for me, I'm making it myself, uh, an overlay on Twitter, because I, I, I am not satisfied with Twitter at all. So for yeah. me, I need, so I'm, I'm, I mean, I haven't looked at Flipboard for years. And when you do content specific Flipboards, where it's not just your timeline, where it's 99% trash, but you do content stuff like this, and it's just uh, curated things okay. around topics, 
That's right, sorry, let me make definite, a suggestion then. Um, let's start the trading show, Fill or Kill. This was the pre-show, and we'll start again, and you get a chance to show your thing so we can wrap this as the trading show. <laughs> you think so? I think so, yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, I have a, then we have to do it in about 40 minutes. Why? 45. No, we can't do that. You mean because you've started recording? No, no, no. But uh, if you want to, uh, to, to start again, that's fine. No, let's start again from, you know, so we, we're, it's fit or kill, it's about trading and yeah. we've gone off on one and it's kind of nice and it's an interesting conversation and, yeah. um, and we've intimated, but in terms of, you know, I like to be a little bit structured and organized That's in fine. what I do. I get to play my intros, I'm happy. Yeah, and so go, go, go for it. Let's make a, a dividing line. Yeah, I start. think people are watching now are utterly confused <laughs> what the hell is going on, but I, I'm happy with it. See, fade to black, that's very important. You have to be a, uh, you have to, that's what I just learned. And <laughs> are you ready now, Ed? I'm ready. <laughs> I was ready before, I just, um, let's talk about Yeah, trading. we were just, but I, I think people tune in for, for every, uh, it's not just trading. Absolutely. Could Absolutely. be a lot of things, but anyway, let's uh, go. It is kind of trading related, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, damn it. <laughs> See, Ed, I have to hack everything, and now I forgot it. <laughs> Just takes a little bit of time. Now I'm ready. See, this is the beauty of watching it as it happens. I saw you dancing there. Yeah, jigging. So jigging. this is our Happy. second. No, it's our third time today running the promo. It's pretty good. Okay. And this is filler kill for uh, second time this morning uh, or afternoon or whatever. And uh, it's, I'm sitting here with Ed Matz, and we were we got off on a little tangent, so we re restarted the recording. And uh, yeah, uh, let's uh, do a fake good morning to to you, Ed. <laughs> good morning. Wow. <laughs> Wow, this is Call me by surprise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. I was I was elsewhere. Uh, <laughs> uh, those people tuned in to the pre-show uh, were heard us talking about. Well, it's the same theme about explaining about lessons learned, and so we're talking about big TV and some of the lessons we're learning because where we want to learn, yeah. we need to learn to take it to the end point or end of the phase, and that's really where we were. Talking about, but really today was about what I like to do on Fridays. Is what I do anyway on a Friday is, and sometimes on the weekend, depending on what I'm up to, is to look at what has happened in the week and draw the lessons yeah. from my my trading experience and from the markets. And I I think that's kind of a useful. There's lots of things that one does as an individual. We can do reasonably well from a trader's perspective on on fill or kill. And so that's kind of what I like to do. Uh, not just from a trading perspective, um, because I'm a, sometimes it's hard because some of the mistakes you make may be real short term, and then I, I've got to explain the trade and, and why I think I made a mistake on that, etc., etc., etc. So, but it's more to do with also with fit or kill some of the lessons we learned through the week. And if you look at, um, can you bring up the pins? Um, actually, it's kind of a good way of doing it. Uh, what I wanted to do, starting with the beginning of the week, the steps to being... Uh, oh, the actual pin boards? Yeah. yeah where it says, uh, that's why I included them, because I think it's kind of a cool idea. Yeah. Uh, the steps. Oh, yeah, you've done it that way. So do you want to go to the... Uh, which one's the steps? Steps is the cartoon. Oh, yeah, that was the hedge fund cartoon. Yeah, and focus on the, the... That's it, five steps to being a trader. It's down... To the bottom right, there's, there's the six stages, but it's the five steps I wanted. That's it. About we talked about you know, there's lots of steps to becoming a trader. There's lots of and it's taking the four the four ste steps towards competence and how you go as a trader from 
uh, unconscious incompetence you're not really knowing what you're doing as you learn and as you learn the lessons you end up not only being doing the right thing in theory hopefully but actually you do the right thing in your sleep it becomes so ingrained that it becomes so systematic and trading people don't realize is uh, there's a real buzz and excitement out of trading and it, you don't know what today will bring you and all those type of things tend to encourage um, not a sense of randomness but a sense of um, by the seat of your pants yeah. and if there's anything out there that one does that is not seat of the pants it's trading and that's the problem is people get caught up with the excitement, the buzz, the greed, the fear, all the emotions and sentiment, and they end up in a place that is not the right place. Yeah. And you need to be, if there's, it's so disciplined, if you arrive at the right place, then it is a process. That, that is actually supreme advice. It just occurred to me when I was going through this because I wrote a blog post on it, I really got to reflect on especially the five steps. And I think what you just said now was adding to it. That's exactly what you need to be told. So the first page on uh, in any trading book should be whatever you think about doing right now, stop it. Don't do it. Because yeah, it almost in entirely the process is going to be wrong and the motivations are going to be wrong. The sizes are going to be wrong. The risk is going to be wrong. It's just uh, the nature of people because you, s you feel that this is uh, an easy buck. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's get rich quick. I mean, there's, there's loads and loads of people wax lyrical. Jesse Livermore's, you know, has talked about people getting uh, rich, rich quick. And if you go there, you know, there's no people enter the market in the sense of the market is a fairy godmother. Um, and it's not, in fact, there's a great quote from um, uh, Jesse Livermore it's uh, the, the only way to get a real I think I've got a slide in there today there's quite a few slides on, on quotes but the only way to get a real education in the market is to invest cash do it in other words track your trades and study your mistakes that's kind of what you know I want, to sum up the week is is got to do it got to be there to do it and demo accounts are great you know I think it's a great stage in the and a colleague of mine always believed that if you're going through a bad run, you go back to paper trading. But it's not the same thing, you know. Yeah. On paper trading, demo accounts underestimate the importance of money on your emotions. Oh, yeah. You know, it's one thing to say, I'm going to buy here. This is a trend support there. And it's a Fibonacci support. I'm going to buy here. But like yesterday, yeah, a classic example. One of the lessons for me yesterday, great show, at um, intermarketanalysis.com. Great guy, very good, but you know he's talking about the market down and the market you know, career. You, you were having that conversation, and there's I'm trying to buy the bloody thing, yeah. I, I've covered my short, and I'm thinking I should buy now. I'll wait for the stops, and I'll wait a bit later because this w overwhelming wave of bearishness, um, you know. And what do you end up doing? I end up missing an opportunity now. You know, I, uh, should I talk about the DAX now? I throw, uh, if you got a DAX chart, I'd put it in Slack rather than the pin. Just yeah. um, be careful not about it. I mean, I have this thing. one. Is that the one? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Um, oh, yeah, I'm in the wrong place. I actually, I've changed my workflow. I actually have the pin up so I, I can see what, you know, some of the thoughts. And, and it's it's... It's on point. I love that phrase. It is nailing. The DAX man of Britain is not just nailing it now, but every phase we've done. So we've been talking about this damn thing for over a month, and it, it's nailed the market. It said that we were going to go sideways, and it goes sideways. I start thinking, you know, yesterday it could go, it could get a spike down to 94.40, but the Mandelbrot, the, the fractal, the bubble, call it what you like, said, nah, 95, the figure, that, that's good enough, 95 double low, and back up, you know, and then back up it goes. I mean, it's a map. Yeah, I mean, why why am I starting to think that looks like a shortcut over there? I'll, dig, I'll cut across a wood, which ends up being a cliff. I've got a map in front of me, so why am I second-guessing, yeah? 
I've got a plan, I stick to my plan, and I stick to my plan. doesn't matter. In fact, the more bearishness, the wave of bearishness, the triggers, the excuses, the career. You know, I even said, I was even asking the questions yesterday about what if they shake hands? What if there are, you know, Putin is doing it just so he could be long of some gold and do a Saddam Hussein and make a few bob on the side? That was um, such a good call. <laughs> well, it was because it was bang on, and I had a plan to not just to cover my shorts, which effectively puts me long of calls, but to buy it, yeah? And if you go back, just put it back up again, and I can finish with this baby in my... Uh, if you notice, the black line comes back. So that's what I'm now hoping for, that it goes for the highs. Uh, but the only problem is the timing. If this has worked pretty closely on the right structure, the right price, but the timing said it, Friday it would start to break up, and we're Friday. So yeah, there's a question mark. So I'm long, of course, and um, if it comes down today, starts pushing down into the low 90, 95, 50s, whatever, then I'll, I'll, I'll be buying cash. But I might have missed the boat. I might have missed the boat. Anyway, I don't think I have. This is I'm actually quite a harder sit. trend. I'm just looking at the chart with my eyes. Hmm? It's not the easiest trend to spot this. That this is a bullish trend from December. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying to, to, oh, no, to in terms view of the, the trend, chart. Right? No, you don't look at a chart from December. You look at a chart from a year ago. And no, but this chart here, you draw like a, a trend line. Look at line a 10-year kind of chart, Sverry. I mean, this is, this is another lesson. Actually, there's a really good lesson. I kind of want to do this. I want to go... Uh, and there's a thing called Fullerton. I put called it Fullerton. There's a piece from Jesse Livermore uh, about uh, bull markets. <laughs> Do you know? Can we flip into that? Have you got um? It's it's a word document. That is a piece that directly from uh, reminiscences of a stock operator by Jesse Livermore. Is it in the uh, in the? Yeah, yeah. It's a word document with the. Um, I want. I tell you what I wanted to do. Uh, you tell me not. Because this is full of, this is a passage. It's, it would take me about five minutes to read it out, which is probably the worst television that could ever be, you know. Um, but it's a great, no, that's not all of it. Um, it's a great passage. Jesse Livermore talks about how you trade a bull market. Yeah. If there's one lesson that we've learned in this week, you know, uh, we've got analogies all over the shop on, on, on where I'm taking this show, or if you like. But there's one thing that, you know, I, I tweeted this about now that it's uh, people have given up on 1929, this is, that's when it's dangerous. And in fact, I put up a chart yesterday that showed the parallel is still absolutely on point, absolutely spot on. And that, um, yeah, I mean, and, and it, it, it's spot on. It's slightly higher, a bit higher, but now even you know, Demark, the the source of the 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 fractal, or well, the public source of that fractal. Some of us have been following that maybe for a while, um, and and ten others I might like to add. Um, uh, you know, and then CNBC, Wall Street Journey, everyone's picked up. He's gone bullish now. Apparently, I don't know that to be a fact. So I've got to be careful about. Uh, attributing things, but apparently he's bullish now for new highs. So, you know, the source of the 1929 fractal is now bullish. It's kind of like the ideal opportunity for it to collapse. That's not my view, but from a sentiment point of view, um, it is. But what it, there is an overriding lesson, I think, to be learned, and that is, is this is a bull market. Yep. Yeah? I know and what you're going to say now, because I've read the same book, and all that matters is that it's a bull market. No, um, I'm trying to find the, the piece because uh, what I gave you is the entire piece. Yesterday, it's, were you on Slack? Yeah, but it's not all of it. It's quite, it's really long. Um, I don't know if I can find it. The, um, I'm sorry, this is... So the bad. previous passages? It's about, um, can you do me a favor, while I'm looking at this, can you look to see if you find a picture? of Fullerton's. Um, it's Fullerton's in, I presume it's New York, and it's where this uh, this all takes place. Um, but I can't find it. It's annoying me. Well, um, here's the lesson for you. The Fulton Bay Hotel. Um, yeah, is it? it? Probably, yeah. It starts off by saying the pieces in Fullerton's, there was a usual crowd, all, all grades. 
or there was some old chap who's not like the others. To begin there was he was a much older man. Another thing was that he was never volunteered advice, never brag of his winnings. He was a great hand for listening very attentively to other people. He didn't seem very keen to give tips. That is, he never asked the talkers what they heard or what they knew. But when someone gave him one a tip, he always thanked the tipster very politely. And it goes on like that. And they nicknamed him Turkey. And essentially what he's talking about is it's a bull market. I mean, uh, let's we'll do this another time until I can find the proper passage. It's a bull market and respected as such. So don't be surprised when he sells off and everyone starts getting pictures that bearish, etc. Don't be surprised until it's proven otherwise. It's a bull market, and you know, and it doesn't stop you selling. Look, look you know, I've been um, selling uh, against calls on my assets, not really selling. I'm not sure at all um, in any shape or form in that sense, but. Um, you know, there is times to be short, times to fade. It depends on your timing perspective. Time it depends how you how you trade. Um, but that's really one of the major points. So let's just nail some of the um, the stock market things. Uh, can you put up the uh, the Schiller diagram, and I'll show people exactly why where I'm coming from. Because we talked about correlations, we talked about intermarket analysis on the week. Um, and how you know you try and bring different segments. Well, there is inter, there's inter inter. You know you can have inter currency analysis. You can bring different things together to to bring up consistency of, of thoughts. Um, I don't see that you've got that slide there. No? The Schiller? No, I don't think so. It's there. It's the third one in. But um, okay, yeah. And that's where I'm coming from. Uh, and it's one of the hardest, look, look, it's one of the hardest markets you will find um, to choose, to quote uh, Paul Tudor Jones, and it's not, um, it's basically saying that we're in the massive blowout, but the massive blowout is so big, it's so big, yeah. that dwarfs anything that's happened before. And there's a, I want to take this to a, something I tweeted about yesterday, you wrote Eureka moment on gold, but it's, you know, it's a bubble theory. But so anyone who's coming up with good reasons why the market is topish is right, but they're wrong, in my opinion, because what they're is doing is the market is about to enter an exponential part of the uptrend. Yeah, you know, it's like it'd be the equivalent of one thousand to nineteen fifty on gold. You know, and gold was in a bull market. Well, you can say twelve hundred, thirteen hundred. Gold was in a bull market before that. Before that. And that's the difficult part, you know, you all the phrases irrational, exuberance, etc., etc. They describe it well because what we're not talking about being right, we're talking about irrationality, and we're talking about a blowout, and we're talking about sentiments where people are fighting it, they don't believe it because it's insane. And they're right to be to disbelieve it because it's insane. But it doesn't stop insanity, does it? It doesn't stop what is so far proving to be a good map. And let me just um, talk about let's can you move it to the, the chart on the left because it's quite it's quite appetite, uh, well quite appropriate on um, about Bitcoin you know the bubble theory Oof. yeah that's a rough one about how you know the, the the one on the top left is the typical bubble theory and now it's reverting to mean and if you look at um, Nick I said I'm going to ask you to put up my gold chart in a minute once I've just gone through this there's another gold chart, which is uh, it's a fourth chart in, but keep yeah. it here a second. Once you break a bubble, yeah, what happens is obviously reverts to the mean, and it if then stabilizes. You can see South African Rand has stabilized. See the Nikkei once the bubble broke, it stabilized again, and you know it becomes a dead issue. People are, are being hurt, you know, buried, don't want to know it, etc. Goodbye market, whatever market it is. And that, in my opinion, is what's happened to gold. It's not a theory I'm announcing for the first time or, or talking about because I do think it's a deflated bubble in more ways than one. And that's where I think uh, it ties up well because um, I think uh, what we're seeing is uh, we're seeing bubbles from a deflationary period. So we are in a deflationary period and the analogy with the 1928 scenario is absolutely spot on. 
and another reason why I still think we have that bubble. But then if you take it, what happens when the bubble bursts? Well, we saw on Nikkei, uh, Nymex and oil, and even the South African RAM may be part of a normalization process and therefore dying as a market, which is related also to the um, to, to gold, obviously. And um, if you want to put out that fourth chart on gold, and I'll show you why my eureka moment. I have had this theory for quite a while. But do you see, um, can you, does this, can you see what I'm making, the point I'm making here, Sferi? Yeah, definitely. Did the bubbles burst on gold? Yeah, we know that. Yeah, it's a major bear market. Yeah, and it could go back to 200 no, or, no. yeah, or we could be having a, because it's essentially a correction, if you like. You know, people won't want to get their heads around what a correction means at this point for gold since it's correcting a move to 1975, but that's beside the point. Um, what happens is uh, it's a correction in price or it's a correction in time. And one thing you happen, obviously sometimes when you deflate a bubble, when you burst the bubble, is it just loses the air and then dies. So the correction is in time. And my argument has been that gold, why I'm not overly excited about gold any which way but lose, is because it's that. Do you know? I mean, that is putting out, what is that? What do you reckon I haven't even worked out the day? If that follows, and even extending the 19, I'm talking about the deflationary period, relatively deflate. Was it deflationary? I don't know, but it's certainly from gold's point of view. So there was deflation within that that helped cause a sideways price action. Gold is a real risk that gold is just going to trade the rain. You know, volatility is probably the biggest, uh, volatility short is probably the biggest, hardest maybe, but biggest uh, trade there is in gold. And that takes it to probably another five years, <laughs> whatever range it sets now or set now, be stuck in for another five years. Slightly lower later by the looks of it. But you know, basically, I am looking to sell gold once it gets closer to, uh, you know, back up thirteen eighty around there. But it's an interesting analogy, and I linked it to uh, it was a eureka moment because I've been meaning to do this to tie it exactly. I, the two markets, I, uh, um, the Aussie and the Canada, you know, commodity currencies. Obviously, Aussie has, and I've drawn a very close analogy with gold and knowledge, um, and the Aussie more recently how they're working very closely together in a shorter term. But there's also a, um, a period in the Aussie's history that I'm following, and also the same for the Canadian dollar. I mean, the, the, the tie-in with Canada is it's hard to spot because the, the, it's quoted the other way, um, but it's, it's there, and, uh, and it's real, and it ties into this period here as well. And it's so powerful. It's, I'm just, you know, the linkage is saying, well, and this is what I like about intermarket analysis is, is once you start breaking down, talked about before the show, about breaking down the barriers with social media, and that's the way the world is going. That's the way even markets has gone with globalization. And that's why intermarket analysis is, is so useful because um, you know, it shows you that every market is related. Well, we've even we've done ourselves a disservice in intermarket analysis by talking about four blocks. You, know, you heard earlier in the week about Ashraf saying it's not the dollar. Look at the yen. You know, for your currency representative of the one of the four blocks, look at the yen because that's more closely related to interest rates. You know, the ten-year note. That's more closely related to the stock market via the Nikkei to the S and P. So it's the yen, no longer the U.S. dollar. That's the fourth block. But within that, you know, the, this is the and again with Alid yesterday, um, a deal. Sorry. Uh, there's so many variables that these representatives change. One day it'll be another mar one market leading it appears to be U.S. rates. Another day or another week or another phase will be Japanese interest rates, and that's an important point about how these relationships are changing, which means certain things will be, can be correlated or even fact related, properly related, causally related to other markets that don't you don't expect it, and it's to do the point Ashraf, you know, I try to draw out of Ashraf that one of the reasons for the movement in these interrelationships is the flow of money, is the weight of money. Yeah. So if, if the Chinese are buying the Aussie for X, Y, Z reasons because they see a better return out of Australia or it's related to gold or whatever as opposed to, say, in Japan because it's deflation or, or whatever, um, then, you know, they're going to have a direct causal link. 
and that's going to create sentiments. Whereas if they don't want to go there because um, gold price, gold is a dead market, and they go elsewhere, they'll the flow of money will create a relationship, and that's important. So it's not just you know I whack, I go on about find the drivers, stick with the drivers, understand them, analyze and look at the chart of the drivers if if indeed the, char- the driver has a chart, but recognize that it, that will change, and recognize that the relationships are so variable and increasingly variable and that's you know the, the analogy with social media and the barriers breaking down the barriers are breaking down in markets which makes it much harder much harder to understand and one well, I mean, thing there's um, uh, there's a great quote from Etzekoita which I, I think is one of the best quotes about markets there is he's the, for such a funny guy with his banjo in his whips or song, he's come out with some real gems. <laughs> Can you put up the first quote yeah. on the list, which is? Is it this one? Yeah, there is. No, Dead Dakota, there is no secret. Yeah, no, no all, that's all not him. Is. Sorry. Sorry for uh, taking the. He's got a. <clears throat> it's not on the driver, I think. That was I, the first one, sorry. I don't think. Oh yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Where are we at? Oh wow, it became a little awkward. The biggest secret. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me just read it, shall I? Yeah. Uh, um, mm-hmm. It's just a little weird. It became a little weird on the screen. Yeah. I think it's probably too large, wasn't it? No. Oh, well, you know, you can't do. You can't get. Um, can't be perfect, see? I made it work. Biggest secret about success is that there isn't any big secret about it. Or if there is, then it's a secret to me, for me too. The idea of searching for some secret for trading success misses the point. And yeah, I, I joke that I found the Holy Grail, uh, and the Holy Grail is, uh, is the problem is, is that I have lots of Holy Grails. And therefore, the question is, which Holy Grail do I use today? It's the same point in trying to be cute about it. Is uh, the trading is all about probability. There are all so many variables. Whatever system you use, it's about probability, and therefore you will lose money at times, and hopefully you'll make more money uh, more often than not. But although that's not necessarily has to be the case, because the important thing is that when you make money, you make money bigger than when you lose it. So you can be 50-50 or even worse, but make more money, you know, two to one risk return, and you'll still be all right. Um, but the important point to recognise is that. It is. It's not. So many people come and think they want to nail it. They want to find the system, the method, the approach, and that's fine. The approach is to recognise that it's not black and white. That uh, that it's a probability game. And once you understand there's a probability game, the hardest part of trading becomes so much easier. The emotion to recognise that you will lose money. That trading is all about probability. That you will lose money. <clears throat> and to a weird point. Rejoice almost to a point that you, um, you know, you're, you've lo- lost, and so it's an opportunity to learn and, and move on. And there's um, some, Jesse Livermore was probably the best guy to quote from this. There's a great quote there about sparing him the rod, uh, the one where he looks incredibly bald and old. Actually, looks a lot like my grandfather did. But uh, yeah, the game taught me the game and didn't spare me the rod while teaching it. You know, and some hard lessons learned. So, take you know, if you're having a bad run, and it's quite easy to have a bad run in this market. I think so we were talking about this yesterday um, on Twitter. One or two people mentioned it. Market is a type of market that's going for stops. Um, but in the pre-show, I talked about the euro dollar <clears throat> being a wedge within a wedge, almost, uh, almost possibly within a wedge. I mean, a wedge is not the easiest thing to trade. So one thing the euro dollar is doing is just stops, going for the stops. Yeah, and if you just take the approach on the euro dollar, that uh, it's going to take out the stops and just where is the next set of stops? Almost to the point. In fact, it's almost very moving <clears throat> to a point of why I've done the downside stops. So I'll do the upside stops. Now I've done the upside stops. I'll do the downside stops. You could almost trade without a chart, just finding out where the stops are and going bang, bang, bang. That's the nature of that market. And to understand that the, the world isn't simple, there's um, 
uh, isn't so straightforward, isn't so you know, black and white, is, um, is, is an important point. There's, um, uh, there's, uh, there's that book, isn't there? The world is not black and white, but there's the Fifty Shades of Grey. It's turning into a... Um, I mean, I actually put that as a, as a block as well. You did reference that. Yeah, it's in the. It's one of the on the list. Fifty Shades yeah. of Grey. I, I talk have a lot about it? it because the world isn't this is black the movie, and white. It seems like. <laughs> have you read the book? <laughs> yeah, right. No, it's a girl's book, isn't it? Isn't it? Um, how can I describe it? I think it's a girl's book. That's not mm, not to not girls or to not the book. I also think it's. Um, I mean, and I, I I haven't read it, so I should stop talking about it because I could get it completely wrong. It's, it strikes me being soft acceptable porn but that's mine you, yeah. you know what it's about right it's uh it's basically fan fiction for the movie twilight and it was rejected by from a, a site that offers free distribution for free books because it was too sexually charged <laughs> so. yeah well that's what i the impression it seemed like a, a modern day mills and boone do you know what mills and boone is no I'll tell you, the novels, romantic novels that, that lady girls and ladies used to read because it's sweet and they just kind of brought it to the 21st century and, and zipped it up a bit. Yeah. Um, but let's get it, I'll move on. So there's lots of lessons to be learned, but the most important one I think is that the world isn't black and white. There's, there's no wonderful holy grail we're chasing. It's about probability. It's and, and that applies. There's so many rules and approaches to use to to trading. And one, you know, I, I keep picking on Dennis Gartman because I get a little bit annoyed by some of the uh, the ideas he's come up with. But he talks some senses. He talks a lot of sense. Some of the rules work. Some of the rules don't. And that's what. If there's one thing I've learned, and I continue to learn, is is there's so many when you start talking about trading. When you start structuring it, something like a show like this, there's a real temptation, a real danger from, to jump from quote to quote, from cliche to cliche. And, and every cliche sounds right. You know, today's cliche will be right, tomorrow's cliche isn't. You know? And that's, again, going back to that Fifty Shades of Grace, there's a time and place for all these rules. And sometimes they're right, and sometimes they're wrong. Can you... Um, I want to show, uh, uh, there's a Dennis Gartman, can you just quickly show the, the block with 22 rules, or Dennis Gartman's 22 rules? Can you tell us more about him, because, I mean, uh, I've known him through you, but, uh, so he's basically a <laughs> motivational speaker for, for, uh... Oh, he's a trader. trader. Actually, uh, what I want to do is to show, um, I want to show that video, uh, the video of him. Um, well, he's got 22 rules. Um, he talks about, you know, he's a bit of a mentor, but he's a trader. One thing he makes clear is that doesn't know anyone who doesn't trade, yeah? <laughs> um, it's because he, I, I guess he's saying, I don't know what he is actually saying by that, but I would say there's two reasons. One is it's very easy, as I alluded to about with demo accounts, very easy to talk a good book without actually doing or recognizing the strains. And the emotions that go with trading. It's also um, very, you know, a lot of people with agendas in terms of brokers and stuff trying to get you to trade and getting us all to trade to come up with ideas. And I think maybe that's where he's coming from. It's very easy to sell uh, an idea. Like the euro is broken high, it's going through the moon, it's the major bull market. Well, how many times could you have said that in the last month alone? And and had your head, head handed back to you with a hundred and fifty. Yeah, uh, uh, that's up. funny you should say that because uh, Richard here is in the office with me right now eating a salad. He used to be a, a broker before and he told me like it's like one tick up and it's uh, now it's a bull market. Isn't that right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a, he's never seen a more bullish market ever than this. <laughs> and that's the broker mentality. You have to be. You have to be on and... and, and uh, yeah, and uh, don't get job. me wrong, there's some really guys, good guys in brokers who don't do that for a start or don't do it intentionally. Um, but also it's kind of uh, from a... You've got to think of people's agendas and the vested, vested interests they have. They want you to trade with them. Um, and so it's easier. The market's bid. It's easier to say buy it and yeah. to say fade it, yeah? If you assume that, at least you do the run the stats, yeah? <clears throat> if 90% of people, apparently, of retail accounts will be blown, 
ninety uh, percent of people will lose their money, um, and the average is what you said. It's I thought it was three months, but apparently it's less. It could be a month. Uh, it's about thirty days on uh, on these uh, levered. Uh... Yeah, so they're not going to be around for long. How about you on the business? So what do you do? You tell them you come and trade with us because we offer good spreads. We offer you know, yeah, help. tight spreads. Yeah. Uh, and how, what is the easiest thing? Well, you make money right here and now. Well, it's strong. You know, you might have to sit around all day if you feed it. But it's strong now. You can make your money now by buying it. Yeah. Right? It's intuitively appealing. But uh, most professional traders, I know, fade a market in one form or other. Yeah. Or, or, yeah don't get me wrong. That's not say everyone is, should be a fade. Or, or, you know, even if you think it's an object, you wait for a dip. You don't chase it. I never buy breaks. Unless it, I said this before on a daily chart. Um, do, do you want me to run the, the one we had before? Which one, sir? The multiplication one? one. What are you talking about? Is that the video? No, the video I want to um, put it into into the Slack. I'll find it again if you you need. Do you uh, need me to find it? Uh, with, with the the tweet with? No, not that video. It's a video of um of uh, Dennis Gartman. It's on the. Um, no, I have it up. Yeah, yeah, I have it. I'll okay, play it uh, right now, one second. Yeah, I'm gonna, I just, um, yeah. I'm actually gonna make a delivery, something that's come to do with big TV, but um, can you run <laughs> this? I'll tell you why, because I want to talk about some of Dennis Gartman's rules. Yeah. And I want to make, uh, I, 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 sorry to pick on him, but one or two of his rules annoy me. Um, and I really get upset with, and I'm guilty of it as well, but talking about cliches and therefore the world is black and white, and therefore don't do that because it's wrong. You know, well, if your system tells you it's right, then do it. Yeah, stick it, to your system. Uh, if it's proven to be right, stick to what you're doing and have create your own rules in that sense. Don't just take things blindly. You know, Ed, Ed Matt says, um, you know, the euro is going higher or whatever, therefore I've got to be long or whatever. Bollocks, excuse my language, but yep. it, it's um, you've got to make your own decisions. Be yep. influenced by people you think are good. Um, I deal yesterday saying about it's great to have a mentor. Jesse Livermore even had a mentor. Um, uh, so did Paul Tudor Jones. These people all listen to other people. But, you know, uh, be careful of when someone says what you're doing is wrong. Unless you understand the reasons why they're saying it wrong, then be careful of taking it hook, line, and sinker. Be careful of working in a black and white world when it's gray. Yeah. And, and that's why I wanted to show rule number one, this video of Dennis Garman, for two reasons, actually. One is how he talks about rule number one. And I disagree with his rule number one. And I'll explain why. But also, there's a great story about sugar. But let's <laughs> watch the video. Simple. So okay. can you run that and I've got to go and take this delivery? Anything in the past two years, it's that science, it's that modeling, it's that mathematics, it's that all the, the sophistication of physis, physicists who are in the background coming up with these wonderful models are wrong. They got it wrong. And, and that's the lesson to be learned of the last several years. What I want to talk about are, are my rules of trading. And I, I try my damnedest to live by these rules. I trade every day for my own account. I'm in the market all day long trading for my own account. I run a fund, a note, I'm supposed to say, the lawyers tell me I have to say it's a note. So if you're any lawyers out there, I didn't say fund, I said note. Okay. I run a note in Canada. Um, we have a new ETF coming out that will be run the same way, and I'm going to be running some money for some of the more famous people in the hedge fund business. So I have my money at risk all the time. I will leave you with one thing. Don't trust anybody who doesn't have his own money at risk ever again. Right? That's important. After 35 years of doing this, I think I've distilled this to a couple of, of, of rules that really do guide me. This is the first rule. Never, ever, ever, not ever, should you ever, ever, not ever, never, ever, am I clear? Yes. Ever, yes. ever, add to a losing trade. Ever, never. The great disasters in this business always occur by people who add to losing trades. Don't do that. 
you have no idea how far down is once down gets started. Nor have you any idea how far up is once up gets started. And because you haven't any idea, when you add to a losing trade, you're dead. Dead. Perfectly, totally dead. I love to use the example. Let's transport ourselves to 1974. Not to speak in hyperbole or anything, but you're dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah let's sort of just pause it a second because it's a great story. But uh, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm very eloquent, very articulate, very, very good. But I, I'll explain reason what, why he is wrong. But, um, but he's right in spirit, but he's wrong in the particulars, and that's the point I wanted to make about being careful about cliches and black and white. But carry on because it's a great story about sugar. That is, oh, yeah. it's nice to play. Inflation could only get worse, the economy was only going to get worse, that you had to buy commodities. Sugar was selling at a dollar and twenty-five cents a pound. Many of you have heard the story before. I'm sorry, I love the story, you're gonna hear it again. Sugar was selling at a buck and a quarter a pound, and the news was clearly the Cuban sugar crop was gonna be wiped out. There were never gonna be any more sugar beets grown in the western part of the United States. The sugar beet crop in France and in, and in Russia was destroyed. Sugar at a buck and a quarter was a bargain and you had to own it. So you bought some. And it went to a dollar and 10 cents. Well, you gotta buy more at a dollar 10 cents, don't you? Because it was a buck and a quarter only two weeks ago and all the fundamentals were bullish and they're still bullish now. So if you buy more at a buck and a quarter, if it just gets back to a dollar 17 cents, you can break even, which is nice. Till it went to a buck. Well, a buck, you gotta buy more sugar, don't you? It was a buck and a quarter only four weeks ago, and the fundamentals are still fairly bullish. There's some news that might be bearish, but basically the news is still fundamentally bullish, and the Cuban sugar crop is gonna be destroyed. And if I buy more at a dollar, if it just gets back to a buck twelve, I can break even. Which is nice. Till it went to seventy-five cents. Well, at seventy-five cents, you gotta buy more sugar, don't you? Because now the fundamentals are starting to get a little bit bearish, but if it just bounces to 85 cents, I can break even, which is nice, until I went to 50 cents. Well, 50 cents, you've got to buy more sugar, don't you? It was a buck and a quarter only three months ago, and yes, the fundamentals are now starting to turn somewhat bearish, but if it just gets back to 75 cents, I can break even, which is nice, until I went to a quarter. Well, a quarter, you've got to buy sugar. Don't you? I kind of see where this is going. Sorry? Is there a punchline to this? Yeah, well, all right, yeah, stop it. Yeah, it's going on forever. It's a bit yeah. for But I'll just tell you the punchline, which is quite amusing, is um, obviously the market keeps on going down and you think you, you need to average in it or come back and your break-even point gets lower and lower and your position gets bigger and bigger and you get buried. And, um, you know, you're down to five. You think it could go back to ten and, and then it ends up at two. To to um, two cents and yeah. it's 1975, I think it was. And um, what happened? And this is the, like the punchline of it. I think it was so funny, is that a lot of people took delivery of sugar, yeah, because they didn't. They just didn't. They never stopped out, so they end up taking delivery oh, of sugar at, at, at a level. Like a garage is full and of sugar. and, um, <laughs> uh, and at two dollars, uh, um, whatever it was, uh, whatever the size of the contract at two um, at two cents, it was. When they got it, they actually took the sugar, the sack of sugar they received, and threw the sugar away and sold the sack. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Which uh, I just think That's it's a funny story. And then there was apparently there was a problem about but you can uh, make alcohol the stuff that, that sacks was made of. No, this is and this is serious. The stuff that sacks was made of then became there's too many people. Uh, there's too many sacks. <laughs> so the price of the stuff the sacks was made of started oh. crashing as well. But or whatever. But anyway, it's um, it's uh, I, I you know I, I took it to task. I immediately said wrong because it, the the one reason it's wrong is because it immediately is out, out of at odds with my own approach. So I, I trade, I try to trade probability, what I think is probability. And for me, uh, it's difficult sometimes to nail the exact entry point, although I spend a lot of time when I enter a position. I think an entry point in a, in a trade is a defining moment. It really does define the trade. Um, you know, there's all sorts of people, all sorts of rules and things that people talk about. But bear in mind, one of the most important things you ever do with trading is enter a trade. If you enter a trade, you know, you think the market's 
it's going higher. Let's say you thought the euro is going higher and it's broken higher today and you bought 137.90 and it goes to 136.40 and you can't hold the position. You know, you were right, but you were wrong. Your timing was wrong. You say timing's the right thing, is the essence then. But the entry, if you bought 136.60 with the 136.20 stop, then you're right and you're in the money. So your entry point is really important. And for me, so I'm not so black and white to believe that I can get the exactly right entry point. I tend to think I can, which I guess is I need to have that confidence. But I also recognize that I, I probably won't. So I tend to layer into positions. So from, um, say, from people I uh, use Elliott Wave and stuff like that and Fibonacci. So I might enter a position. I'm looking for a correction. I, it could be a deep correction, but I don't know. I'll start buying at 50% expecting and hoping because I only have a third of a position if I only buy 50 percent it'll go to 61.8 percent and it goes to 61.8 percent I am now averaging a loser there's a quote have you got a picture of um, Paul Tudor Jones up there you can put up uh, see. and then you know this is what I'm trying to do I think there's a possibility it's like the Aussie actually at the moment yeah there's a possibility Aussie could go all the way down to the lows I don't think it will but there's a possibility it could so I'm I'm buying I'm buying the drop, so I'm going to buy the SIN 8.6%. Yeah, that's the third. I'm averaging a loser. No, that's the wrong quote. There's a picture of Paul Tudor Jones sitting there in his office with a phrase up there that says, never average a loser. So I'm actually, what I'm doing, my optimized strategy that I've learned over many years that I've found to be successful, I'm trying to match my entry with the probabilities, is actually defying what Dennis Gartman and Paul Tudor Jones, all these people say, don't average a loser. Now, I'm not saying that you should average a loser as such because the, the spirit of what they're saying is don't add to a position that you didn't expect to. And that's a crucial difference. My trade plan, my trade setup says I should, should stagger in, I should layer into the trade. That's what I'm trying to do, match it to the probability. So I'm expecting to do that. I'm hoping. I'm going to be disappointed if it only goes to 50%. I want to get it cheaper and I'm going to buy against the low with my stop below with my low. My whole trade is set up. If I don't buy the 61.8%, if I don't buy the 78.4%, I'm going to start chasing it a bit higher, uh, possibly. Yeah. Euro, Euro yen is a good current example of that. I'm already got it, but not enough. So I might end up chasing it. I don't chase markets. So it means I'm going to be right with a third of the position. And uh, the way I like to trade, I then trade the probabilities as it breaks higher. I then um, I haven't I've got less to trade, yeah. I've got less position to to be flexible with to improve my my whole approach. So I'll have to rethink and restructure the whole whole trade. So to for you know for Dennis Carmen say never 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 ever got that. Don't ever average a loser. I do it all the time and I, I do it successfully and I think it's a very, very good approach. So what is a cliche? The spirit behind what he's saying is right. You know, if you didn't expect to add if I bought everything, then don't, I was going to buy, then don't suddenly add again. Because one thing, you start building position, this uh, position size you didn't expect, then you're not probably prepared to take the pain that you need to run the position, which in some ways is what we've seen you know, this week with the stock market. The last 10 days, last two weeks with it rallying is all the bears, you know, people bearish 1929. Looking for, you know, okay, they could go to the 61.8%, the 50%, they start selling it, and then the NASDAQ goes to new highs, the SP is pushing, you know, the Dow is, is pushed. Actually, the Dow has been is relatively subdued. Um, you know, certain markets all pushing, and the market hasn't broken to new highs, hasn't actually defeated the 1929 analogy at all, but people have turned because they didn't expect it to go so far, and so they've averaged wrong, and so they're now struggling to hold a position, or in fact, they're out. Um, because they didn't uh, anticipate that. So the point is, is beware of hard cast rules. Do you want to put up the, the rest of the rules there on Dennis Cartman? Because uh, it's, you just go through the list. Because right? I, I want to do the guy, I don't want to do the guy a disservice. But, um, can you read the, uh, the next rule? Can you read it out? Because I can't see that. Never ever. At a losing position. Trade like a mercenary gorilla. Capital comes into where it is mental. No, no, right, so the that second rule is trade like a mercenary out. gorilla. Yeah. I mean, I've made the point about never. I, mean, I get annoyed when people, you know, they pick on people. 
they, they raise the ante, they introduce emotion into a, a, a pretty emotionally charged environment anyway. You see a lot of good um, uh, a lot of good traders who are pretty subdued. They, they take the stress on board. But, you know, if you want to wind them up, if you want to get smacked by someone, then go to a trader who's looking pretty calm, but is actually internalizing a lot of the, um, the stress. He's handling it well. You want to trigger him, he'll, he'll bury you. Um, so don't ever inject emotion into the um, equation. Can you zoom in again? Because I was kind of reading off the screen. Uh, never trade like a mercenary gorilla. I mean, I've made this point before. Don't over-emotionalize the market. Don't personalize the market. Even bull and bear is bad enough. But when you talk about trading like a mercenary gorilla, make it a trench. Let's fight the other side. You know. Sorry, can you zoom in so I can read it out? On the... Uh, well, obviously, he's, he, he can't do that. Um, because if you start, you know, a lot of people use, I think it's clever to use the... Um, those analogies with, with war and, and stuff, anything like that, that it makes it very hard, much harder to hold a position and to, to sit with it because you just beat yourself up you know, and be willing to change sides readily when one side has gained the upper hand. You know, I, don't, I made the point before is that we can all work together. You know, trading arguably is a zero-sum game, but we can get together and work together and do well together. We don't have to think of beating the FTSE or beating those the bulls or beating the bears. We don't know when we're long. We don't need to go and beat the proverbial out of the uh, the bears because that's not what trading is about. You know? um, and there is a useful point that he makes, though, about capital coming in two forms. Um, you know, the money that you sit in your bank account. He referred to the fact that he was taking on some hedge fund money, uh, looking after some, you know, getting more money on board as a trader. He's a successful guy uh, and a good trader. Uh, but the mental, but not just money as capital, but also the mental side, the, yeah. your intellect, what you do, investing in yourself. And I would go further that you don't, it's not just about um, the intellect. It's not just about... You know, your analysis you do, it's also about investing in your own well-being, your own psyche. Yeah. Because if you can, um, if you look after yourself, then if you like, there's a third, there's a third type, it's a different type of physical capital, but it's a body capital. Like yeah. If you're well, you're strong, you know, I go running, etc. I'm prepared, I, I eat the right foods, I try to, I don't smoke anymore. I used to smoke a lot and I used to, every time I got a bit stressed trading, I'd go and have another cigarette, you know. That's do you, have, uh, do you have like an American Psycho routine? I believe in taking care of myself. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I've managed to keep You put some. on that uh, almond face cream and uh, you drink beer in the morning and that's beer, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Apple, apple juice beer. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, um... No, but, oh. no, but being part of it, being is prepared, it's, it's, it's ticking all the boxes, being right. Then they're recognizing, you know, straight trading is a very, very, can be a very hard, stressful business. And that if you are strong financially, if you're strong intellectually, you don't need to be overly bright to do well in trading, but you need to be overly disciplined in yeah. what you do. And also to be disciplined and to take the knocks, etc. If you've got a lot of stamina, if you're physically in good shape, then it then it helps. Yeah. And referred previously about sometimes it's difficult you know, when you're going through highs and lows of life. Sometimes it's difficult, not just because your psyche is strong, but physically you may be tired as well. Yeah. And if you're in that position, then it's often a a good thing to to step out. Um, Okay, the objective is not to, this is going to rule four, the objective is not to buy low and sell high, but to buy high and sell high. Wrong. That's his objective. It's not necessarily yours, and it's certainly not mine. I do, um, I buy low and I sell high. That's what I do. Um, but I believe how ranges shift. So if it's a bull market, it may be entering a new range. I would be prepared to buy high because I think it's entering a new range. But what I'm really saying is I'm buying low within the new higher range. And then I'm be willing to sell higher. You know, uh, yeah. um, he's referred to the sugar. Basically, it's got, I mean, if you, if you 
like break it down. It's it's a bunch of rules that are fitting to maybe let's say half or two thirds of all trading systems in one way or another. But the problem is that people take these things as gospel. So yeah, uh, a yeah. Like never, me, another one is, is probably uh, probably is Dan Ellis. I forget. But one of the rules he does, one of the rules people use, is never you know, never let your uh, position go into a loss. So you you know, let's say um, I. I buy a market at 40 um, and I'm looking for 90 high, looking for 50 points and it goes up to 50 and it goes to 35. That's a loss, isn't it? I should be out. No. It's only just started. You, what's the point of taking a trade if you're going to be out or like that? How know, does, that that's, something, that's an interesting point. I, a I mean, I do have to, that's we, what I'm really attacking. No, we do have to uh, unfortunately cut off fairly soon because we're a little bit behind schedule. We have a meeting here. So, um, uh, but, but uh, one of the things that I wanted to touch on in, in regards to rules like this is using very, very tight stops, meaning that you have almost zero tolerance to be in the red. Is that a successful system or, or do you lose so many good trades that it doesn't work? Well, you, you, you can't uh, chat me with the same point. I, I, there are many successful systems that rely on very, very, very tight stops. Okay. Yeah. There are many uh, people who have failed using very, very, very tight stops. You have to work within what your your system is. And if your system is found to be successful, you found it works in that particular market or over a series of markets using very tight stops, then use very tight stops. Yeah, that's your system. Or if it says you can't use tight stops, unfortunately, and therefore you have to sit there, and let uh, you know, take a bit of grief sometimes, then that's your system and that's what you've got to learn to do. It's about anticipating, looking at what you do and your systems and, and applying it and being very, very disciplined in, in how you apply it. Um, so for me to say that you, know, you shouldn't use very tight stops, is if you're using my system, then using very, well, depends which system you use because I actually do use uh, very tight stops and I, I'm very quick to move my stop to a break even point but you've got to be right it's got to be right for you um, if you trade a lot of people uh, I say in the retail market won't be sitting there all day long trading some people will trade put the positions on go to work and come back and see you know they'll collect a pot of gold at the end of the day or they'll or they'll lose uh, lose money but they'll find out what they Done. Obviously, they can't. They've got to allow for the volatility of the market. You know, that's over and above and beside their own trading system, and so they've got to be careful about having too tight a stop. Uh, the example is one you asked me about. One of my first trades was when I went on holiday. Yeah, I sold cable, and I was absolutely right, and it was um, uh, 800 points pips plus lower when I came back, but had been stopped out at the very high. It just blipped up. And it was a great trade. It was absolutely right, but I had my stop too high. Now, if I'd been in the market at the time when it was stopped down, I could have resold. My user rule that I don't resell a market or don't trade that market from a swing or position point of view for that day if I'm stopped out of the position because I don't want to avoid chasing money or throwing good money after bad. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I would, in that instance, the next day, if I still believe very much or even more reason to believe that it was going my way, my view was right and the risk return was right, then I could have entered it. You know, I could have done that. But I wasn't going to be in a position to do that, so I should have had a wider stop. Yeah. But, um, so, um, do you... Uh, uh, I really have to go. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Well, let me do, so well, let's, yeah, okay, I fine. I think we have uh, to let, wrap it up let's because wrap we're about this an up hour with, um, uh, A non-trader, as far as I'm aware, a guy called Benjamin Franklin, heard of him? Can end on on a on a press dent. Basically, Benjamin Franklin said that if a man empties his purse into his head, no one can take it away from him. In other words, the three forms of two or three forms of capital, or one of them is your own mind and you, your intellect and your own approach and how you think about things and do things. Yeah. And an investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. Learn. That is a brilliant yeah? advice. Actually. It's an, easy, uh, it's an easy burden to bear. Yeah, maybe. But just don't ever stop learning. Don't ever think or if you think you've arrived at a point where you know it all, then you haven't no. <laughs> by definition. Just keep learning. Just learn the lessons. Go through what you've done for the week or prior to that and, and learn. I mean, it's probably a, it's a, 
it's a process for another time to how you analyze trades and, and learn from the actual specifics. But I think if you continue to invest in yourself and continue to learn as the market learns, then there is a shortcut to experience um, and keep doing it. Brilliant. And I think that wraps up our show. Thank you everyone for following. We're going to continue now with a feed from Live Squawk. I want to thank you Ed so much for this. It's, it's been great, another great week. And I think uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, updates we're going to do maybe over the weekend. Yeah. Learning from experience and getting better. I think it was great to bring in two new two guests this week and really add it to the dynamic and the conversation. Yeah, exactly. They and they're both very good on that same subject. Both slightly different approaches, but it was cool. Yeah, it was good. Very good. And um, have a good weekend, everyone. Good luck. Yeah. There's um, there's a fun, interesting market which really uh, promises to be even more fun and more interesting. I believe. Volatility okay. is here. Yes. And we end on that note. So I, I'm sorry, I really have to go now because of uh, a meeting that's pressing here. <laughs> so there cool. is. Uh, okay. okay, I'm going to turn on the on the squawk and off the the other stuff. <laughs>
Uh, Chile says January copper output at 459,133 uh, tons. Uh, production fell uh, for the month of January. So drop us on three percent output there for Chile uh, from Chile for January copper output dropped uh, three percent on a year over year basis.
No, Fred Bullard says, where there's a factor in U.S. economic performance. Yeah. He has said this before. Uh, Plosa says, Yellen, very talented Fed leader. Uh, Plosa speaking on Bloomberg TV. Uh, a vote in Hawk. Uh, plus the points to pretty tame inflation in the environment there for the US. Bullard says housing in much better shape. Plus is not worried about disinflation. Bullard says outlook good even if GDP is revised. Uh, Norvin so uh, Norway Sovereign Wealth Funds uh, Chief says we'll uh, review its mining sector investments in 2014 to check sustainability. Uh, the Chief says that uh, boards, not investors, should decide on executive pay packages. Fund to conduct more thorough review of portfolio hiring sector specialists to evaluate sustainability of investments. In many countries there's been an attempt uh, to make general assembles, assemblies decide on executive pay packages. This is wrong. So top Ukrainian security official accuses Kremlin of directing armed units in Crimea. Uh, Bullard here says Fed has to be sure before any tapering shift. Plus it says stock market rising uh, mostly on fundamentals. got a link up to the Bloomberg uh, um, TV interview with Plosser at the moment for those who want to listen in. Plosser says optimistic about longer term economic outlook. Uh, so uh, Bullard there just saying FOMC has reserved the right to change tapering pace. We heard from um, Yellen yesterday on the matter. 
saying that uh, again they are data dependent their, their decisions are, are based on uh, data Well, I still believe that 6.6% .6 is still too high, or it's still high on unemployment rate. Oh, and I just picking up on the late Thursday CME group lowering uh, margins on US 30 year and uh, US ultra bonds, also lowered margins on crude oil futures. Inflation running low, says Bullard.
uh, Bullard says, have to revisit outlook for 2014 interest rate rise. Uh, Energy News, OPEX oil output rises by 170,000 barrels a day, month over month, to 29.96 million barrels a day in Feb, says the Reuters survey. Uh, output uh, rises further from uh, December's two-and-a-half-year low uh, due to higher supplies from Iraq, Angola and Iran. It's a Reuters survey. Uh, Plosser says uh, sees inflation risks from uh, being forever at zero bound. Again, he is a hawk. But uh, Bullard comment there says has to, has to revisit outlook for 2014 interest rate rise. Uh, Renzi's cabinet approves decree for local governments, says the Italian Newswire answer. Uh, this latest decree from the Italian government will include measures for uh, the Rome bailout.
Economic data remains noisy, says uh, Plosser, speaking on Bloomberg TV at the moment. Uh, we should be patient and not read too much into our data. He expects 3% economic growth this year. So Plosser remains happy with the economy, thinks it's still doing well, but says it will take a few months to get a proper handle on the economy. Six and a half percent uh, figure for um, threshold for unemployment is now obsolete, says Plosser. Plus, I still think the unemployment rate is um, meaningful, remains meaningful. So Bloomberg, CNBC, both uh, putting that comments in from uh, Fed officials. Bullard there on CNBC says impacts of bad weather on the economy. Uh, no reason to be less optimistic about the economy for for the rest of the year. But again, those comments are uh, just getting flashed, flashed across all uh, wires at the moment.
Um, MNSR finally kindly put up the uh, final extensions uh, for a month end for the T notes. Um, a very, very big one, as we've mentioned, for the last week and a half. Oh, it's a big one. Uh, US Treasury is 0.13 years versus 0.12 years uh, premium uh, prelim in that re uh, result. Agency is 0 0.09 from 0 0.07. Um, the credit is the same as before, 0 0.06. As for Europe, Pan Euro uh, aggregate 0 0.07, same as the prelim. Uh, aggregate Treasury is there, 0 0.06, same as prelim as well.
Uh, Plus is still speaking on Bloomberg TV. He says low rates may cause misallocation of uh, capital. Energy news, the Reuters survey suggests that West African oil exports to Asia set to fall 1.9 million barrels a day in March from 2.04 million barrels a day in February. Uh, we're still buying a lot of bonds, says uh, Bullard on the uh, QE taper uh, question at the moment. Uh, but large remain optimistic on US growth. Deck has been cleared for growth, says Bullard, until he next time he speaks and changes his mind.
Uh, Greece announced their to auction some 875 million euros worth of uh, 26 week bills on March the 4th. Last couple of days, last three days, we've seen bonds drag around uh, US bond markets here. Uh, again, US bond markets have a strong month end uh, index this month, but uh, we've been um, saddled by European government bond um, negativity, I guess, uh, this last day or two anyway, a day and a half. And the case continues.
Uh, company news is uh, Francis Total sells its 10% stake in Azeri Chardonnay's to uh, gas fields. Say industry sources talking to Reuters.
Uh, Plos is still speaking on Bloomberg, says that ageing population, other demographic changes affecting US labour market. Just a reminder then, um, up at one o'clock, you've got Germany's book speaks uh, in uh, Frankfurt. And then up at uh, 1.30, we've got US uh, jobs data, uh, sorry, US um, GDP data alongside Canadian GDP data. Bank of England's Carney, Bank of England, uh, Bundesbank's Don Brett, and Baffin's Koenig speaking at this um, Bundesbank symposium from half past the hour. Um, Fed plans to use a number of technical tools to control flow of reserves as it moves to unwind toward normal policy.
I feel like Spain's Deputy uh, Prime Minister Soraya Sainz de Santa Maria says that uh, uh, the Cabinet has approved plans to foster growth. Just getting a load of uh, info out on the hour here. Going into the uh, job uh, jobs data, growth data, about half past the hour. Uh, Bricks News, you've got HSBC Brazil, manufacturing PMI comes in at 50.4, uh, down slightly from 50.8 seen in January. Uh, Yankovic set to hold a press conference on a uh, Russian uh, news station RT, which is about to be aired at the moment. Spain to encourage non-bank funding sources for companies as science.
Uh, Europe should move towards real single immigration policies, as Rajoy. And as we heard earlier today, Italy decree has uh, decreed. Uh, Italy government has decreed uh, new local uh, laws, which include measures for Rome bailout. It's just being um, put out there. So Ukraine's uh, deposed uh, leader Yanukovych appears at news conference in Russian city of Rostov-on-Don.
Spain announced bonds uh, for sale next week, 2017, 
Okay, month in flows then uh, go against the dollar here this month and we're seeing that played out um, against likes of the euro uh, more so than against the likes of the pound whatever but uh, uh, dollar under I think a bit of pressure against the uh, basket here as I said with month in flows um, unfavorable for the dollar this month 138 11 we trade last now we're still listening to Yanukovic but he's really not saying anything of any any note really or, or market moving uh, comments there from him um, in about 30 seconds, we'll do the preview for uh, today's growth data out of North America. Alternatively, you can listen in to uh, Yanukovych. who we'll put the links up there for you. Bullard, speaking on CNBC, said, new policy that keeps uncertainty to a minimum. Hopes to get back to more normal monetary policy soon. Okay, so we've got uh, North American data, uh, growth data from both Canada and the US. We start with the US prelim read for the fourth quarter, expected to show um, a rate of 2.5% from 2.8% last time around. Uh, the range there from 80, 85 surveyed, 2.2 uh, to 3%, 2.2 to 3%. As for call PCE, uh, seen at 1.1% from 1.1%, uh, 18 survey put the range at uh, 0.8 to 0 0.1.2, 0.8 to 1.2. Deflator, GDP deflator seen at 1.3 from 1.3 last time round. 27 survey put the range at 1.3 to 1.4, uh, 1.3 to 1.4. PC prices premium seen at 0 0.7 from 0.7, 9 survey put the range at 0 0.7 to 1.3, 0 0.7 to 1.3. Consumer spending um, seen at 2.9 percent from 3.3 percent uh, last time round. We'll also uh, get Canadian GDP on the rise. Then uh, the headline month over month seen falling by 0.3 after gaining by 0.2 last month. 18 survey put the range at minus 0.5 to flat, minus 0.5 to flat, uh, with the uh, annualised quarter quarter over quarter rate seen for the fourth quarter at 2.5 percent for Canada from 2.7. 21 survey put the range at 1.7 to 3 percent, 1.7 uh, to 3 percent. Don't forget we've got uh, Bank of England's Carney, Bundesbank's Don Brett, Baffin's Koenig speaking from Frankfurt up after half past uh, the hour. Uh, Russia says that operations of armoured uh, armour attached to Black Sea Fleet in Crimea in accordance with existing Black Sea Fleet agreements as their foreign ministry statement. You got dollar Swiss hit session uh, low here. It's what 87.91. Again, so it comes in sub 80, 88 there. Dollar Swiss on the follow, 87.96 now losing about one percent on the session here. Euro Swiss down 0.2 of a percent on the day so far. Um, HSBC say the latest retail sales report from uh, the Census Bureau showed that spending in fourth quarter was not uh, as strong as previously reported. As a result, we estimate that annualised growth in the real consumer spending uh, could be revised down to 2.9 from 3.3%, uh, taking into account data revisions to inventories, construction and net exports over the past month. We estimate that Q4 GDP growth uh, could be revised uh, down to 2.3 from 3.2%. Uh,
Yeah. So there's a Reuters um, poll here. It says that the US government is set to slash its estimate of four-quarter growth as exports and restocking by businesses were less robust than previously thought, leaving the economy on a more familiar path of modest expansion. Uh, gross domestic product growth will probably uh, be lower to 2.5% annual rate, according to a Reuters poll of economists. That would be down sharply from 3.2% pace reported last month and 4.1% uh, logged in the third quarter. Revision into the GDP number will be better reflective of the underlying economic trend because the increases in inventories uh, and exports that massively lifted growth in the second half of the year uh, were si simply not sustainable, uh, says uh, Harm uh, Bandholtz. Uh, Chief U.S. Economist at Unicredit uh, Research in New York. As for Canadian GDP data, um, Bank of Montreal uh, economists uh, they say uh, they look for a half percent uh, contraction on the month over month print for Canadian GDP, which is below the market consensus of 0.3 percent and a two and a half percent seasonally adjusted print for US uh, full quarter GDP, which is in line with the consensus view. This combination of outcomes today will probably be enough uh, for the uh, one spot uh, 11.40, 11.50 to come back into view uh, in dollar CAD on the uh, initial knee jerk. However, above 111, the figure, a Canadian downside surprise in the order of uh, minus 0.4, minus 0.5 is probably already reflected in dollar CAD. The role of poor weather in December may also be largely con uh, discounted into the price at these levels. With so much at stake on the dollar side, including taper to path, the big scrutiny today should be on an unexpectedly weak US uh, K uh, dollar print, uh, GDP print, and or weak data due late in, later in the morning. This will be the case, especially if weakness in the fourth quarter revision is due to more than just smaller contribution from inventory building. This would leave the uh, dollar trading pretty unvulnerably uh, into the weekend. Comments there from BMO. Three minutes now to the uh, data, just to recap then on US GDP, prelims in at 2.5% from 3.2% previously. Uh, the range 22 to 3%, 2.2 to 3%. As for the uh, sales prelims in at 2.5% from 2.8%, 8 survey put the range at 2% to 2.8%, 2% to 2.8%. As for the deflator, that's seen at 1.3 from 1.3%, the range 1.3 to 1.4%, 1.3 to 1.4%. Core PCE seen uh, at 1.1 from 1.1%. .1 the range 0.8 to 1.2, 0.8 to 1.2. Uh, personal consumption is in at 2.9 from 3.3% uh, last time round. Uh, on the Canadian front, you've got um, annualised GDP seen at 2.5% uh, from 2.7. The range 1.7 to 3%, 1.7 to 3%. As for the GDP on a monthly basis for December, seen down 0.3% from up 0.2%. The range minus 0.5 to flat, minus 0.5 to flat. Quick uh, look around the markets with two minutes to go then. Uh, Euro dollar there, 138.08. With um, first level of uh, resistance seen up at 20. Um, sellers between 20 and um, I think 40 were expected up there above. Uh, cable, 67.08 last now, up 0.1 of a percent. Uh, we've got a dollar yen down a quarter percent here. We've got dollar Swiss losing 0.9. That's what 88.02, recovering the 88 handle. Uh, with Aussie dollar there trading flat, that's what 89.60. Uh, on the yields, we've got 10-year yields out of the out of, uh, US at 2.664, 30-year yields at 3.61. Canadian yields I do not have, uh, but dollar CAD last there trading at 111.18.
So don't forget, we could hear from Carney. I don't, it's not me bang on half past the hour, but we could hear from uh, Carney, uh, Don Brett, and Baffin speaking at this symposium. We've got 10 seconds to the data. Obviously, I'll do the US data first, followed very quickly by a Canadian uh, read. Two point four percent for uh, for US GDP, two point four personal consumption, two point six core PCE, one point three GDP price index, one point six Canadian um, GDP on the quarterly, two point nine percent expansion. Uh, monthly fell by half percent uh, from a point two percent gain last time round. As for the uh, annualized, then two point nine percent for Canada, uh, quarterly point uh, seven from point seven last time round. Just go over the US data again. A headline comes in at 2.4% on the GDP from uh, 3.2. Sales premium at 2.3 from 2.8. Consumer spend at 2.6 from 3.3. GDP deflator at 1.6 from 1.3. Core PCE prices at 1.3 versus 1.1. Uh, PCE prices premium at 1% from 0.7%. Yanukovych in Crimea needs to stay part of Ukraine. Let's come here from Yankovic. Yanukovych. Dollar cat at fresh highs here. Yanukovych reiterates he was not asking for military support from the Russians. Not a great deal of movement from the markets following that uh, GDP read. Treasuries do fall back here with yields now trading last at 2.673% for a 10 year.
A U.S. equities news men's warehouse say they're prepared to meet with Jose Bank to discuss proposal to acquire all of the outstanding shares of the company. Yanukovych doesn't know when the meeting with Putin will happen. And men's Warehouse um, look forward to the receipt of Jose Bank's draft merger agreement. Quite some comments from Bullard. A downward revision to US Q4 GDP would not make me any less optimistic for 2014, he tells CNBC.
Uh, Yanukovych confirming that he was preparing to run for uh, presidency in 2015. Yanukovych not going to take part in May 25th elections. Yanukovych will not take part in May presidential election in Ukraine, he confirms. He does say that the uh, elections are illegal. A fixed income related news, you've got Maersk CEO on the wires, he says the company won't issue a new bond in the near term, cash is ample. A bullet tick up in core year over year inflation in Q4, consistent with FOMC view that inflation will move back to towards 2% target. So speaking on CNBC at the moment, uh, FOMC needs to revisit language on 6.5% unemployment threshold. Bullard unsure when Yellen will stand on the matter. Where Yellen will stand on the matter. Yes, mate. A city revises down its uh, fourth quarter 2013 results down on Mexico unit fraud headlines over here just pointing out. Where do you see that? Uh, looking through the details here, city group just fourth quarter full year 2013 uh, final downward revises down by 235 million dollars. Sites result fraud found in Mexico subsidiary. A flow related news hitting the wires here from Bank of America. Stock funds worldwide attract 8.2 billion inflows in the week ending Wednesday. It's the third straight week of inflows according to uh, the bank. Emerging market stock funds worldwide post an outflow of 3 billion, uh, bringing outflows to 25.6 billion year to date. Bond funds attract 2.9 billion of inflows flows in the week. It's the fourth straight week of inflows according to Bank of America. Uh, EM bond funds meanwhile uh, post 1.8 billion outflow. That's the uh, longest streak of outflows on record. Uh, high yield bond funds worldwide uh, attracting 2.1 billion inflows. The third straight week of inflows there. Uh, meanwhile commodity funds worldwide 
They've attracted uh, $900 million inflows in the week, marking the first inflows in the last 16 weeks. Okay, I just want to uh, cast your attention to dollar CAD last trading one spot one zero eight six. According to Trader Chatter, uh, someone is unwinding a huge position. Uh, it looks like dollar CAD um, is uh, suffering as a result there. Uh, more from Citigroup here. City believe fraud is isolated. This particular client within the uh, bank, uh, Banamex accounts receivable financing program. That's a, a Mexican program. We've got uh, St Spain's Labour Minister on the wires here. A Spain tax break on new highs won't impact the budget. Citigroup, companies exploring legal options and coordinating with law enforcement agencies, it says. A city group, in quotes, we are exploring every available option to recoup the misappropriated funds. A trade-related news, according to China Customs, China has rejected 887,000 tons of U.S. corn. This is due to GMO presence. And I know a lot of you guys are following Mark Mobius. He's on CNBC at the moment. He says it's a good time to invest in Brazil. He says uh, the Olympics and the holidays will boost consumption in the country. Uh, Consumer-oriented stocks uh, look likely to benefit. Uh, Yanukovych says the uh, Timoshenko gas deal lost Ukraine $20 billion, or well, he alleges.
Just been asked about the violent swing coming through on this uh, dollar CAD uh, number. Um, again, as I mentioned before, Bank of Montreal had 11.50 as a as a key sort of level up there. Dollar CAD um, got to 11.49 uh, basically before the violent switch, which is what we've seen now, and some uh, uh, money coming out. As I said, month inflows are uh, negative for the US dollar uh, this month.